Okay, so let's dive into this tool and look at velocity triangles for an axial compressor stage. Now an axial compressor is just one where the flow uh, primarily moves in the axial direction. Uh, and this is opposed to a radial compressor where the flow turns from the axial direction to the radial direction through the machine. Axial machines are most commonly found in aircraft engines. So if we start by taking a cylindrical surface cut, through the compressor stage. Now let me sketch that out. There's the casing to which the stator is attached. There's the center body to which the rotor is attached. So this is the rotor. This is the stator. And this is the center line, and the rotor is rotating in this direction. And let's consider a cut, as I said, on a cylindrical surface. At a radius, RA. RB, RC is R. So it's a constant radius uh, cut through the stage. Station A will be just upstream of the rotor. Station B will be between the rotor and stator. And station C will be downstream of the stator. Now we're going to neglect density changes and annulus area change to simplify things. So the annulus is, if I were to draw a front view of this, this machine would look like this, right? There would be a rotating center body with blades all the way around it. And then there's the stator behind the blades all the way around it. And the area in between the center body and the casing is the annulus. So because we're going to neglect density changes and say assume that the annulus area remains constant, then the axial velocity will be constant for mass conservation. And that'll simplify our analysis. Now we unwrap the cylindrical surface. So now the coordinates for the service are x and r times theta. And at station A, we have the rotor, then station B, then the stator, then station C. And the rotor looks something like this. Draw a couple of blades to help illustrate. And the stator looks you know, something like this. And so these rotor blades are being pulled around at speed omega r. And we're going to use primed quantities. For the relative frame. 
So frame of reference attached to the rotor. And the unprimed quantities. Are the absolute frame. Okay, so this is a sketch of the geometry. Now let's see what velocity triangle analysis tells us. What we're going to do is at station A, B, and C draw triangles which show us what the velocity vectors are doing in the two frames of reference, absolute and relative. We'll start with the axial velocity, ua equals ux. Now there's the reference frame velocity, omega r, and then the relative velocity plus the frame velocity gives the absolute velocity. So this vector is u a prime. This angle is beta prime a and beta a, the angle, the absolute flow angle coming in is zero. So the flow, the real flow is coming in axially. What the rotor sees is the flow coming in at this angle due to its relative motion. Now, at B, the blade, the blades turn the flow, and so the flow leaves the trailing edge roughly parallel. So that's UB prime. The axial velocity ux hasn't changed, we still have the frame velocity omega r so that the absolute velocity ub is now turned to the left. This angle is beta b and this angle is beta prime b. Finally, after the compre after the stator, the flow has been realigned with the actual direction, so that beta c is zero. Now here you see that the absolute theta velocity increases across the rotor. It goes from zero to a positive value in the r theta direction. So since u theta increases, we do indeed have a compressor. Now these diagrams of velocity vectors at each station are what we call velocity uh, triangles. These allow us to see two things. One, that as I just mentioned, the absolute tangential theta direction, velocity increases across the rotor, and two, that the tangential velocity decreases across the stator. Now, further note what these blades in this turbo machine look like. 
They're just airfoils. Now you'll recall from our study of airfoils, the cut a condition, right? Which was that the flow weaves the airfoil, or in this case, the blades, approximately at the trailing edge angle in the relative frame. And so that's what's shown here for the compressor uh, rotor, where if we drew a camber line, it might look like that. And you can see that this flow and this line are parallel. And we want, we've designed, these blades have been designed to minimize the incidence so that this direction is basically parallel to that direction. Similarly for the stator, the stator sees the flow coming in at this angle and you can see that's parallel to the leading edge direction and at the trailing edge the flow is basically in the axial direction which is what we see here. So this is a well-designed blade row where the flow is entering parallel to the leading edge in the relative frame for each blade row. And we can see that's, that is indeed consistent with our diagram here.